Hey everyone, this is Stephen Robles, The Bearded Teacher, and today I'm going to show you how I edit multiple podcasts a week on the iPad. Now, I record my podcasts on Mac because I do remote guests and it's still too cumbersome to do it on the iPad. But when it comes to editing, I am the fastest on the iPad. I know Logic Pro, I know GarageBand, and the reason why it's so fast is because of this right here. The Apple Pencil makes it super quick to move audio around, make cuts, and it's the only way I can do multiple podcasts a week and still edit them in a timely manner. So I'm going to walk you through right from when I stop recording to editing a show and publishing it right from the iPad. Now I'm editing right now on the iPad mini. I also have a larger iPad Pro, but for the lightweight and portable nature of the iPad mini, I love being able to edit podcasts anywhere, whether I'm on the sofa, in my car, because I'm dropping my kids off somewhere. I'll edit podcasts anywhere, and that's again why it allows me to do multiple shows a week and edit quickly here on the iPad. Now I edit all my podcasts using the app called Ferrite on the iPad. It's a free app to download so you can try it totally for free, but if you're going to be a serious user and edit your shows on the iPad, I recommend you spring for the pro version. It's $30, but it's a one-time purchase, not a subscription, and it allows you to do things like export for MP3, do chapters, and you're going to want to do all of that with your podcast. So this is the pro version of Ferrite, but it looks exactly the same even if you just have the free version. Now I'm going to jump into the settings real quick here in Ferrite go to settings there's a lot of different settings for editing and recording but the ones that are really the most important to me are for the Apple pencil and so again you have some here but right here where it says gestures and pencil this is where you can really customize editing with the Apple pencil now I keep these two finger tap two finger drag here is one of the more important ones I do pencil edits fingers pan and zoom what that means is, as I'm editing the podcast, I can use my fingers to move around the timeline and pinch and zoom out to different parts of the episode, but the pencil is going to actually make the edits, the cuts, move the audio, things like that. I've quick select turned on. You can actually program the double tap of the Apple Pencil to do something specific. I have it to play or pause the current project. Deleting when selecting leftwards, you're going to see me do that a lot, and I leave drag to select on toggle. You, of course, can adjust those settings as you need, but I wanted to show you the settings I have there. Now, I actually have multiple templates set up where once you have your projects going and you have your different podcasts that you do, you can set up templates to make it easier to start a project. But I'm going to start from scratch. Hitting the wrench icon, I can import audio from my files, and this directly is the files app. You can go wherever you need to. I'm going to go to my Movies on the Side podcast and one of our latest episodes here. And again, I have a bunch of audio here, like backup and stuff, but I'm gonna import my file and my co-host file, and I'll hit open. And what that does is just imports it actually into Ferrite. It'll download it, import it, and then you'll have those audio files here. Now it's kind of weird, you can't just like create a blank project with nothing in it right from the home screen, as far as I can tell. And so you kind of have to hit edit on an audio file that you import to start a new project. And so that's what I'm gonna do. And so here on my co-host name, Nate, I'm actually going to hit this little compose icon right here, and you're going to see it's going to start a new project. Now I have his audio right where I want it, and this is what the editing window looks like in Ferrite. You can customize a couple things. I've customized this toolbar down here, and you can do that by hitting the gear icon. There's a lot of different controls you can drag in there. The ones I keep, and I really don't use many down here because I'm usually using the Apple Pencil, I do like this little symbol right here, which lets you add a chapter in your audio file, and you can put in a title real quick. So here's the audio from my co-host Nate. I'm going to move it over just a little bit, and I'm going to hit this plus icon to create a new blank track. And here I can tap in the track, and I can hit import, and I'm going to choose my audio file to import. And we record using TriCast online, and it actually syncs the audio pretty well. So there's our two audio. They're pretty much synced already. Depending on how you record your podcast, you may need to align these differently. But here's our two audio tracks. But I actually have some intro music that I like to play as well. So I'm going to add a third track here. And I'm going to click in the track and hit Import. Now again, this audio file I think I already have in the library. And so I'm just going to tap that audio file, and there it is. Now, every track, I'm going to see I'm pinching and zooming to kind of zoom in here. Every track has a little wrench icon up here with a bunch of settings. Now, I'm going to turn ducking off. Ducking is it'll lower the volume of a track when another track is playing, like the Duck King track. But for a talking podcast, I don't want it messing with those audio levels on its own. So I turn the duck off. And then for effects, you can add things like equalizer, compressor, 
and noise gate. Now I'm not going to go into a ton of details of what those audio effects are. I just want to show you they're there. And you definitely want to do an equalizer. You know, depending on microphone and how your voice sounds, your EQ or equalizer might be different than mine. But I'm going to show you. So I have an equalizer and compressor. If I jump into equalizer, I actually have some presets saved. So you can actually save different equalizer presets, compressor presets, and you can even have those in the templates when you create a new project from a template and they'll all be set. But I actually have an EQ here from my co-host and so I'll leave that in here. Just so you know, you can add EQ. It's a little different than an audio application you might be used to where you just drag lines up and down. Here you kind of hit this plus icon and you see this, you can change this kind of peak. I mean, it could be a low pass. It could just be a, a notching this frequency kind of thing and you drag it up and down. If you're not sure what to do with equalizer, you can just not do it. It's okay, but I wanted to show you that it's there. I'm gonna delete that little node I created. So there's an EQ on that channel. I'm gonna do an EQ over here and make sure I turn the duck off. And for the equalizer, I have a preset saved for myself as well. And so I'll do that. And then here's the intro music. Now I want the intro music to start. And if I play this, you should be able to hear it. So that's our intro music. Now again, I want to actually duck this track because we're gonna talk over it for the intro of the show. And so I'm gonna leave duck on. I'm not gonna put any effects like equalizer because this is a finished track. But one thing I am gonna do is fade it in a little bit. And so a cool thing you can do is this little arrow right here, I can drag it to the right. And this actually creates a fade on the beginning of the track. And so I can do that and it'll fade in. So now I have my intro music. Now I'm gonna move my audio back to the beginning. So now you're gonna see me do some things fast. And again, if I miss something, ask a question below this video in the comments and I'll answer it for you. But if you triple tap with the Apple Pencil, it actually selects all the tracks from that point forward. Now this track starts on the left, so it didn't select that one, but it selected all the tracks going to the right. And now I can drag it wherever I want. Keeps the tracks together, which is very important. Make sure your audio stays in sync. So I'm gonna drag these over here. Now we actually talk for a little while. It's actually a bonus episode before we start the real episode. So I kinda need to find the beginning of where we start talking about the movie. Nay, before we even jump into this movie, Nay, before we even... So that was actually the beginning of us talking about the movie for today. Now you're going to see me start editing with the pencil. So I'm actually going to put the pencil down on this track and drag upwards. And you see those little like striped lines I mean that's actually going to be deleted once I let go of the pencil. And so now that's gone. If I tap ripple delete, it'll actually move all the tracks that just had a portion deleted over to the left and line it up again. But I'm going to triple click again. I want those over here. And these I can delete. So I can either tap it once and hit delete, or I can select it and hit the little trash can down here. Now here's the beginning of the episode. And we actually record a little intro at the end so we can tell what we talk about. Let me find that intro real quick. Um. Oh, also, if you haven't yet, we would greatly appreciate. He is filled with huge. And this week, we review the bazaar. Hello and welcome to Movies on the Side. This is Steve. Okay, so that's actually the beginning, beginning of the episode. Now I want to put this at the beginning of this track. So I'm going to zoom out and you see I can pinch and zoom with my fingers quickly around the timeline and I can tap with the pencil and I can either do a cut, that's actually a cut, and I'll paste it over here. Now I'm going to do something on these tracks that not everyone recommends or tries to do, but the way I edit with the pencil, I find it to be the fastest way to eliminate silences and also move stuff around once I'm in the editing mode. Now when you tap on a track here in Ferrite and you hit this little arrow to the right, there's an option called Strip Silence. Now you'll have to probably adjust these settings to make sure you're not cutting out any talking, but you can move those dials around. You can see what it's about to delete. And then once I have those settings right, I hit done and it actually removes all the spaces, all the silences. I like to do this over using a noise gate because sometimes the noise gate can be finicky. It cuts out when you don't mean it to. And I prefer this strip silence command. So I'm gonna do it again on my track down here. And I'm gonna do it on these tracks as well for the intro. So strip silence and do it one more time. 
Now, the reason why it's still easy to manage long tracks of audio, because if you were dealing with like Logic or GarageBand, you're gonna have to select all this audio if you wanna move the whole track back and forth. But again, I can do that triple click and it selects all these bits of audio all the way to the right of where I clicked, from where I clicked on the audio clip forward. So it's not a big deal that it's all cut into pieces. I can still move the whole thing around very quickly. Now I'm gonna edit the intro to this episode and you can kind of see when I move different moments of speaking into the gaps and you'll see how quickly it can be done with the Apple Pencil. I'm actually gonna lower the volume on the intro track just a little bit so it's not over us, but I'm gonna show you one last thing on export where the audio levels, you can actually let Ferrite auto level it and it does a pretty good job of making sure audio levels are you know, the same all the way through from speakers to music. And that's one of the reasons why I don't worry too much about the volume levels, which you can, you know, adjust the volume of each track with these dials. You can have an extra gain in the compressor settings. But for my Movies on the Side podcast, I actually use the auto level. For that, you click the final mix. And again, you can put effects and automation on the entire track. But down here is the auto leveling and I'm gonna do regular on that. I'd stay away from the strong auto leveling. It can just be a little too aggressive. So if I do that, I don't have to worry so much about the you know volume levels here and there. So there's that. So let me edit this intro. I'm gonna play from the beginning. And I want the talking to start right there. So I'm gonna triple click on this, move this, and I'm gonna delete some spaces that didn't get deleted and you'll see me drag across those and you'll see me move some of these audio tracks while it's playing, which is one of the powerful things about Ferrite. And you'll see me edit, here we go. Hello and welcome to Movies on the Side. This is Steven Robles. And this is Nate Baranowski. And this week we review the bizarre and fascinating movie from 2021, Netflix original, Don't Look Up. We talk about moral of the story of this one. What is this movie trying to tell us? And what are we going to do with that? This movie is filled with huge actors like Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Kate Blanchett, Tyler Perry, and frankly, they all do an incredible job. We discuss all of them. Steven takes us to Romance Corner and talks about Jennifer Lawrence and Timothy Alamite. Jennifer Lawrence, Kate Blanchett, Tyler Perry, and frankly, they all do an incredible job. We discuss all of them. Stephen takes us to Romance Corner and talks about Jennifer Lawrence and Timothy Chalamet. And we talk about what's really important in life. Oh, all this and more on Movies on This Side. This dramatic pause for dramatic effect. We out here, like and subscribe. All this and more on Movies on This Side. This dramatic pause for dramatic effect. We out here, like and subscribe. Nate, before we even jump, I like and subscribe. Nate, before we even jump into this movie, all right. So you saw me edit the intro there. I was dragging to delete, moving audio clips around, and it was super fast to do it. I lowered the volume of the track kind of halfway through. I faded in and out using these little triangles, which you can do on every bit of audio if you know you need to kind of fade out a breath or something like that that someone took. But you see how quick it was just to move things around with the Apple Pencil, triple click to select everything and move it around, dragging track. So honestly, it's just really fun editing podcasts on the iPad. So that's a little taste. I might go in depth in another video, but I do want to show you quickly how to export a project. So I'm going to click this little kind of done button and you'll see this is my project. If I hit this I, I can rename it. So to make sure I have a good name here. So let me do, you know, movies on the side and maybe the episode number, which was 175. You go down here and you can actually change what the file name will be when you export it. You can choose the export format, which again, you'll need to upgrade to that pro level to do an MP3, but you can also set a default format in the settings. But if you wanna do MP3 podcast, you can do really 96 or 128. I leave it on mono and then I'm gonna go back. You can do author, copyright. You can even add custom artwork to the MP3 track, which is pretty cool. And once you have all those set, 
you just hit the share here button on the project and then you can scroll down and save to files and what it's doing right now is actually compressing the audio into an mp3 it's applying that auto leveling effect and again you've already finished editing everything and then you can put this mp3 and upload it to your podcast host and you have a podcast and so that's how i edit multiple podcasts a week directly on my iPad, it's super fast, it's fun to do, and I can do it anywhere because of the portability. And here you see I can save this file wherever I want. One other thing I should show you is to add a chapter. Let me jump back into editing here. Sometimes I add a chapter when we actually start talking or pass the intro. I'm gonna hit that little add chapter shortcut and you could see I can add a chapter. I can call it something like movie review. And then this little icon, again, you can customize these. You can click to actually show the chapters you've added. I actually do link to audio instead of link to timeline. If you keep a link to timeline, the chapter is going to stay at this time code no matter what. But if you link it to audio, that means if you're editing and you move some stuff around, the chapter will stay with the audio track. And I find that to be more useful. So that's how you do chapters. I now exported my MP3 file and it's ready to upload to my podcast host of choice. And speaking of publishing your podcast, once your audio is ready, I recommend Buzzsprout. They're actually sponsoring this video, but I use Buzzsprout for my podcast movies on the side. And I love what they do for podcast hosts. Their analytics are incredible. They have great features like dynamic pre-roll and post-roll content. But one of my favorite features is the website that you get when you host your podcast with Buzzsprout. You can go to a specific episode and this is what it looks like. This is my Buzzsprout website. You can do custom imagery, custom colors to match your brand. You got your social links. But I love that they have all the different podcast apps available. So wherever your listeners listen, whatever app they use, they can jump to your podcast in that app right here from the episode webpage. They also have great transcript support where you can have an entire transcript right here on the website. You upload that with the episode. And I'm a big chapter marker fan. I like when podcasts have chapters and it actually pulls the chapter markers directly and displays them on the website. So really cool. So go to buzzsprout.com. You can actually have a free account. You can upload up to two hours of audio a month and actually have a link in the video description where you can sign up. So check that out. I actually have a whole video talking about podcast hosting, how to move your podcast to Buzzsprout, and a bunch of other videos like starting a website with Squarespace, publishing podcasts with Squarespace, tips on Apple devices, parental controls for iPhone and Apple TV. You can check out all the videos, subscribe to the channel, and I'll have more tutorials coming. If you had questions about editing podcasts on the iPad, drop a comment below. I'd love to interact with you there. Do videos if you have suggestions or questions. Hit a like on this video, and again, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I have more tutorials coming soon. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Stephen Robles. You can shoot questions to me there as well. And you can hear the podcast that I edit on the iPad, Apple Insider, HomeKit Insider, and Movies on the Side. I'll put links to those podcasts in the description. You can hear what it sounds like for a finished podcast edited totally on iPad. You can hear what it sounds like and listen to them there. Thanks for tuning in, and our thanks to Buzzsprout for sponsoring this video, and we'll catch you next time.